Now that we've established what photosynthesis is in a very broad perspective. We've also looked at where it occurs, specifically looking at the chloroplast and its structure and the idea of photosynthetic pigments. We can finally actually look at photosynthesis um, in a, a lot more detail and specifically start going over the process itself. So now this next flowchart will be simply entitled photosynthesis and it will just be sort of an introduction um, to the steps that we're going to be looking at. Specifically photosynthesis, the first thing I want to start off with is the reaction itself because it's important to understand one thing about the reaction. Let's write it down. The reaction of photosynthesis is six CO2 molecules combining with six H2O molecules and then also utilizing light energy. It's important to um, signify and emphasize light energy in this situation in order to yield and give off C6H12O6 plus 6O2 and this is our overall chemical reaction. Okay, This is the chemical reaction that we want to focus on. More specifically I want you to notice something. What did we see in our previous chemical reaction of respiration? We simply saw the opposite. This is something that I really find beautiful about biology and specifically biology one is the interconnectedness and sort of the amazing sort of ability that photosynthesis and cell respiration have this intertwined relationship. The idea that we as human beings, as animals that respire, rely entirely on the product, the byproduct of photosynthesis that is oxygen and the plants themselves, this cycle of life, this beautiful cycle, rely on our byproduct of carbon dioxide. It's a very interesting idea and it really puts into perspective our overall goal of today of not only understanding the process but understanding the importance of the process. Plants give us our product that we need, plants give us our reactant and we give them their reactant. Plants give us a product that becomes our reactant. We give plants a product that becomes their reactant. Very beautiful sort of relationship. I think it's quite poetic. So besides the point, let's move forward. Um, now I just want to go over a bit of a background on photosynthesis. So we'll do some uh, very short background information on the process. The process itself is two parts. And we're going to go over both parts in the next couple of videos. There are the light-dependent reactions. That's one part. So light-dependent reactions. From this point forward, it'll just be called LDRs. Um, this is the photo part of photosynthesis because this is the part that involves light. Light-dependent they need light reactions. So this is where we get the photo of photosynthesis and specifically this also occurs in the thylakoid membranes, the TM, thylakoid membranes. In addition, the other part is carbon fixation. The carbon fixation reactions. Some people refer to these as the light independent reactions but you can't really say that they're light independent because they rely on the products of the light dependent reactions. So it's sort of a nuance, sort of a uh, bad way to say it. The best way to say it is that they're definitely the carbon fixation reactions. Um, this is obviously the synthesis part of photosynthesis. When you say carbon fixation, that simply means making carbon, making a carbon-based compound, synthesizing a carbon-based compound. What is, if we go back to our uh, equation right here, what is that carbon-based compound we're going to be synthesizing, utilizing photo, utilizing light? It's glucose, of course. And simply what we mean by glucose, more so than not, is uh, simple sugars. In addition, we want to say that this process occurs at the stroma. Remember, the stroma is just the fluid interior. Um, we'll write that down, actually, to emphasize it. It's the fluid interior. Tons of enzymes are located here. That's why the process occurs um, at that point of the chloroplast. All of this occurring in the chloroplast, and then we have specific parts of the chloroplast at which it's occurring. So that's our background. Those are our two parts. I want to go over in a little bit more detail the light dependent reactions. As far as the LDRs are concerned, um, a little bit of background information on them. So we have a good scope of what we're going to be talking about. The overall goal of this process of the light dependent reactions is to of course turn light energy into what? 
chemical energy. We've said this a million times. But specifically now what we want to say, the type of chemical energy. We actually are going to turn it into two main products, ATP, and this is a product that's new to us, NADPH. Okay, Make sure you have everything, not NADH, but it's NADPH. I just think the P maybe just is photosynthesis, right? That's all it means, but uh, we don't need to get into the details. These are the two types of chemical energy we need to make, utilizing the light energy provided by photons of sunlight. So that's our goal. That's the goal of a light dependent reaction. Use light, dependent on light, to create chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. We also have a summary reaction um, to sort of look at so that we can refer back to this. And when we complete the overall process, the summary reaction goes as follows. A lot of stuff, but it's important. 12 H2O molecules will add with 12 NADP plus molecules, and that will also add with 18 ADP molecules, and that will also add with 18 inorganic phosphate molecules, PI, and that will combine with light, of course, that's the light dependent part right there, and this will all combine through, and you can say that you can write on top of this LDR if you have possible room LDR. Through the light dependent reactions, this will turn into six molecules of O2, 12 molecules of NADH, NADPH, already messed up, and also 18 molecules of ATP. We'll see how that specifically happens um, as we continue looking at the light dependent reactions and the actual steps involved. But this is the summary that you should definitely um, write on top of the page, if anything, so that we have an overall sort of way to, a path, let's say, that we're going to be going through. In addition to this, um, there are actually two types of LDR, two types of light-dependent reactions. So let's just uh, emphasize something. Photosynthesis is involved, uh, has two parts involved, light-dependent reactions and carbon fixation reactions. Light-dependent reactions have two subparts, and those two subparts are considered linear electron flow. That's one type of light-dependent reaction, and also the opposite would be cyclic electron flow. So make sure you understand that there's cyclic electron flow, linear electron flow, both are light-dependent reactions, and that is part one of, let's say, photosynthesis. So that's our basic background. Next, we want to look at photosystems. Photosystems are the sort of hubs of photosynthesis. This is where photosynthesis is going to be happening. And specifically, you should know that it occurs at photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. PS1 and PS2. I do not mean the Sony PlayStation. I mean photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 for anybody that had that and crossed their mind. It always crossed my mind every time I learned this. So PS1 and PS2. Both of these are located where? Where do you think? Obviously the thylakoid membrane. Look, thylakoid membrane, light dependent reactions, makes sense. PS1 and PS2 are on the thylakoid membrane. Their job is to capture light energy. So we'll say light energy. Capture light energy and transfer. This is new to us now. Transfer excited electron. This is a key, absolutely important part of uh, the photosystem's job. And we'll get into the details of what that means in just a second. And what we mean by this uh, overall is that these two things, capturing light energy and transferring an excited electron, actually creates ATP and NADPH. That's what we wanted and that's what we'll get through the use of photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Moving forward, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 within it, within them, both have two separate complexes they're called and what we basically mean by complexes is two separate regions okay so let's broaden our scope one more time photosynthesis involves two parts light dependent reactions and carbon fixation right now we're talking about light dependent reactions there are two types of LDRs linear electron flow and cyclic electron flow but within all LDRs within both LDRs there are PS1 and PS2 these are photosystems that are within light-dependent reactions. That's why they're a subtopic altogether. And within photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 are two separate complexes that work together, two separate regions. One region is called the light harvesting complex. This is going to be the complex at which 
we're going to have um, 250 chlorophyll molecules. CHL will just stand for chlorophyll. Uh, let's write MOL for molecules. 250 chlorophyll molecules. We're going to have a bunch of accessory pigments. I'll just write accessory pigments right here. We're also going to have um, many proteins. So I like to consider this sort of the area of the photosystem that's going to do a lot of the helping. They're going to harvest light. They're going to capture as much light as possible. Why are they doing that? Because all of that captured light has to then involve itself at the reaction center complex. So there's a light harvesting complex that does all the capturing of light. Harvesting light literally takes light, utilizing chlorophyll, accessory pigments, and proteins, and then transfer it to the reaction center. Why to the reaction center? The reaction center complex has a pair of chlorophyll A molecules. So I'll just write CA MOL since I'm running out of space. So we have a pair of chlorophyll A molecules. We remember that chlorophyll A is the primary photosynthetic pigment. It's going to do the majority of the job. It's going to do the hard work, the most important job. And what's going to happen overall, these pair of chlorophyll A molecules will have this step. This is what will occur. And this is something you have to know. The electron that's located here, there's an electron located here, is then going to be transferred to a primary electron acceptor. Let's remember again, photosynthesis is all about absorbing, elect absorbing energy and then giving that energy, turning that energy into a high energy electron. Then that electron has a choice. Do I go back to my original state or do I get accepted by an acceptor? Look what's happening right over here. It's getting accepted by an acceptor. An electron, all this light is going to go to the reaction center and cause an electron to get really, really, really excited. And when it gets really, really, really excited, it has to get accepted by something to calm it down. And it's going to get accepted by a primary electron acceptor. And that is all going to occur at PS1 and PS2 simultaneously. Specifically, they are named so because PS1 and PS2 both stand for um, something totally different. They actually refer to P700 and P680. The reason why it's called PS1 is because it was discovered first, so it's called Photosystem 1, and PS2 is discovered later, it's called Photosystem 2. The 700 and 680 is very important. You have to understand that the 700 is referring to the fact that it absorbs light best at 700 nanometer wavelength. Remember, light is presented in photons, and photons come in waves and wavelengths. The wavelength at which PS1 absorbs light best is at 700 nanometers. And for P680, obviously, it's going to be at 680 nanometers. So that's where the naming comes from. Chlorophyll A molecules are located within both of them. And then because they're located within both of them, an electron will be excited within both of them. And we're going to see this in a much more systematic, stepwise way in the next um, video that's going to talk about the linear electron flow. That's going to be the specific way that PS1 and PS2 interact with each other and give this ability of the electron transferring to a primary electron acceptor. Let's just understand overall that photosynthesis is this reaction. We have this very intimate relationship with plants for this reason. They give us the oxygen and we give them the carbon dioxide. It's a relationship that is absolutely crucial for life on Earth. We have uh, basic background, light-dependent reactions, carbon fixation reactions, and then we talked about LDRs in a little bit more detail over here. Um, we're running a little bit short on time, so now in our next video, we're going to be looking at linear electron flow.